What's up, Denver? Chris Lopez here today, and we've got a very exciting podcast. We have one of the Denver Broncos from Super Bowl 50 in the studio today to talk about financial literacy, mindset, and how he got into real estate investing. And this player, now turned investor, is actually a connection that Chelsea Scott made while doing a portfolio analysis. Chelsea, how'd you meet our guest, Ryan Harris? Well, First, Chris, thanks for having me today. Um, and it was kind of a series of very organic connections. Um, Ryan and I share someone who he works with. Um, it's it's basically um, kind of like a legal, you know, legal advisor for you. And that person happens to be a friend and a neighbor of mine. And um, our children play together, so it just kind of worked out that uh, the both the connection that we share um, had suggested that maybe Ryan and I meet and talk about some portfolio strategies as a real estate investor. So Ryan, first of all, welcome. Great and to be here with you both. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Fun to share time with you. We really appreciate your time today. So yeah, that's great. Um, so Ryan, I'm going to talk about a couple of things uh, to start out. So Ryan and I had a uh, portfolio analysis about two months ago in September. And since then, I know you've done a few things. You made a few changes. You've had a few conversations. And so we're going to get to that. But I was really excited in an email exchange we had today to hear about your strategy. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to highlight from a high level the Ryan Harris strategy to real estate investing. All right. So um, it's basically no or low debt. Yeah. Security, cash flow, and low risk. Yes. So I'm going to ask you if you can start by talking about that. Yeah, well, I'm somebody who blew their first million dollars when they made it. So when I made my first million, uh, just didn't seem like it on paper. And, yeah. you know, I was upset with everybody else, of course, right? It wasn't, it wasn't my fault I went broke. Um, so mm. learned about this guy, Warren Buffet, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And I like Buffets too. He liked Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Found out it was Warren Buffett and just started paying attention to wealth versus being rich and the decisions that wealthy people make and and what the lessons they teach chris you talked about rich dad poor dad before we started i mean i read the book the millionaire next door and mm -hmm. it kind of shattered every preconception i had of yeah. building wealth and i was doing it all wrong i was saying yes mm -hmm. should have said no you know um i didn't even think five yard five years down the road because you know, when you're in high school, you're thinking four years from now, I'm going to be in college. And then in college, you're thinking four years from now, I'm going to be in the NFL. And the average NFL career is three years and two games. So, you know, you're not taught this long term pro projection. So uh, I really wanted to make sure I never went broke again. And unfortunately, I had a teammate who took his life because of the debt he was in. Um, so those two those two situations really made me commit to creating long-term wealth. That's great. Um, so tell me about that pivot. Talk about kind of after you first kind of had that experience and that loss, what did you do from there? Well, I started small. I think small steps are big, you know. Um, and, and for me, knowing knowing that the, the arena is, is better for me than making maybe just jumping in and figuring it out. You know, NFL players have such a short timeline to create money that – if you make a mistake, it's really an exponential mistake, right? It doesn't yeah. affect just right then there. Well, now you don't have money for a home or, or to be in the right school for your kids. Or, you know, now you, you have to take a job versus doing something you love and having a passion. So I started small. I started reading, started listening to podcasts. Uh, I'm big on mm -hmm. mentors too. You know, I'm really big on if you want to go somewhere, talk to somebody who's who's in that arena. And my first discussion with real estate, I got on with Emmett Smith. A lot of people don't know, you know, NFL running back who's got a huge uh, real estate situation. And I started telling him what I wanted to do. And you know, I like the idea of a duplex, a fourplex. And he goes, well, let me just tell you what I do. He said, well, we got, you know, in r roughly translating the, the conversation, I got, you know, uh, Emmett Smith real estate company that has Emmett Smith real estate development. We bring people into the development who purchases the land through the company, who then that whole group purchases, you know, Emmett Smith um, construction and purchases the a HOA from Emmett Smith. So yeah. he's, so I, I, I was just introduced to the idea that you could make money not only on the group and the purchasing, but also, you know, every single screw and cement block put in. So I was aware of the duplex, fourplex, aware of some commercial real estate people that I had known. Um, but also developers. And I just decided to, decided to start small. And that was with a fourplex. And then we purchased a duplex too, to uh, keep in line with, with that plan. So your first investment was a fourplex? Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my first investment was my house that we live in. Okay, yeah. yeah. But yes, uh, a fourplex. And you know, I was looking at a single family unit. And thankfully, somebody I knew at real estate at the time, I kind of called them, told them my plan. 
And he said, you know, you really opened a vacancy with a single family. I'm like, well, what's vacancy? You know, he's like, well, I mean, think about if, you know, somebody's not renting and you have to pay for it if they, you know, in between renters. So talk to him. Had another mentor who's who's done really well in Boulder, Colorado, near near where I'm at. And he was a pure numbers guy, right? But he said things like flat roof. I'm like, what's a flat roof mean? Mm. He's like, well, you know, flat roof, you're going to have to repair it more and it's going to be more cost. I'm like, these are things I never had thought about. Vacancy, yeah. flat roof, you know, cap rates. Um, so really just dug in there and, and created what I wanted. And, and after the fourplex, really had an idea of what cash flow looks like, what vacancy looks like. And where I thought the city was moving. And, uh, and so we bought another duplex, but it had three bedrooms each side, it has three bedrooms each side. So yeah. I'm big on bedrooms because that's where people sleep. And, yeah. and so that's kind of how I, how I began. That's great. And that's, um, that was something that we'd talked about in our session, which was great looking at one of your fourplexes and your yeah. duplex. And then we started talking about leverage, which was also kind of a concept that you're considering, that you're thinking about at this, at this point. Yeah. And so we kind of reran the numbers and you are definitely in a good position um, yeah. on the leveraging side. So is that something you're still thinking about? Um, yeah. After you... talking with you, absolutely. Yeah. Um, everybody who retires, here, here's the one thing you need income. You know, and it's, and it's unusual to see a 36 year old talking about retirement, but I know, right. I know I have teammates. I've lived it myself. When, when you're going to stop doing what you're doing, you need income. And so for me, how do I ensure income? And you know, this is pre COVID and stuff. So my thing is if I own the property outright, mm -hmm. whether we have one unit in each property rented or not, I'm making cash. So if cash flow is the idea, cash flow pr allows you to do things like pursue your passions, go back to school, go on those trips that you like. Um, that that was what it was. And, and also 78% of NFL players are either bankrupt, chemically dependent, divorced, or all three two years after they're done playing. Wow. So I wanted to keep the money away from me so I didn't spend it. And so I, I really, I, I'm fully, I have full equity positions in both our properties. Great. I know. It's, it's amazing. You've done a really great job and great recovery. Thank you. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, those are big lessons, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's called this the street of uh, of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a tough one, but um, that's that's great. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious because, you know, you shared your investing strategy of, uh, I think you said no debt and yeah. low risk. Yeah. Now, Chelsea's talking about leveraging up. Yeah. I hear some conflicting points of view here. Right. So I'm curious about where that's meet in the middle. Yeah. So what we talked about was just kind of understanding the amount of equity that was embedded in the properties. And yeah. so right now there are six doors in yeah. your duplex and your fourplex, right? And so the option to now double or triple the number of doors that you yeah. actually have and spread out that capital across them, when you have six paid off doors or you have 18 paid off doors, yeah. it's it's a big jump. Now, what it does is it actually, what people don't realize is you generally can keep the same amount of equity you have in a property. So let's be really simple. Let's say you have a million dollars of property that's valued with $250,000 down. Mm -hmm. You have $750,000 equity in there sitting in there, right? Yeah. Now, if you take some of that equity, not all of it, but some of it, and you start spreading it out across those properties into down payments, you still have equity in each one of those properties because you've now put those into small chunks of 25% down. Yeah. The nice thing is though, you've now tripled the numbers of doors you have. And if you have, if you are 36 and you have 20 years, so let's say to pay down those notes, a little bit of extra work because mm -hmm. you're taking 10 years off the note, yeah. but a little bit of extra work. With 18 paid off doors, your cash flow is now not just 3x, it's usually more like a 6x. The yeah. multiplier goes up exponentially. Yeah. So it just gives you the option to think about how can you leverage that portfolio of, yeah, it's paid off now and I can cash flow, let's just call it $20,000 for property for super simple numbers. You get 40,000 right now of cash flow at the moment, but now if you pay off those 18 doors, maybe you could get 120,000. Yeah of, you know, or 150,000 of income. So it was this concept that we talked about, and especially in this market today, where interest rates are so low, yes. properties are overvalued. We do know that, that's definitely there, but a lot of times when properties are undervalued, interest rates are higher and vacancies are higher. Yeah. So they all kind of work together. So we just went over those different principles and that that concept, which you and your wife seemed really excited about and, uh, you know, opens up some other opportunities or options. Yeah, and, and Chris, for us, just the idea that you could create leverage and still maintain the current cash flow while gaining and growing your real estate holdings. I think, you know, because my, our thing was always don't touch the cash flow, right? If we put something out 
uh, leverage wise, that's going to reduce the cash flow. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea helped us see, well, you can actually, as she just mentioned, spread it across. And here's the other thing. You don't have to take all the leverage you're available, right? I mean, mm -hmm. my first mistake was in real estate. I asked the bank, how much, how much house can I buy? You know, what can I afford? Don't ever ask the bank that question, right? Because they're going to get, gonna the get yeah, yeah, yeah. So here I was, uh, and for people who know Denver, I'm off, you know, 470 in Lucent, which is this suburb, uh, suburb of the suburbs, five bedroom house, single guy, four bedroom car, literally, uh, you know, rich mahogany office, you know, that overlooked the mountains. And I'm thinking, this is my house. And thankfully, my lawyer at the time is my conciliary now. He said, you know, you sure seem real happy in this two bedroom apartment. And I was like, you think there's smaller houses I could buy? You know, but these are questions that are real and that I know a lot of people have. And, and a lot of times the conversations, what prevents us from having them is just being embarrassed not to know. But one mm -hmm. of the things you have to get over to be great at whatever you do, you cannot be embarrassed about what you do not know. Mm -hmm. You know, Peyton Manning's going to ask a hundred questions in, an, in a one hour meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's because he wants to know every detail and make sure everybody else is on the same page. So yep. uh, I just wasn't afraid to ask questions and, and, even in our leverage conversation, I guarantee you I'm never going to take the amount of leverage that I'm offered. Right. Haven't for 10 years, right? Right. But understanding with a percentage of that leverage, could I increase our holdings, long-term wealth, flexibility, stability? That's a different conversation. So it sounds like um, for the sort of like balancing security and risk on there that if you can maintain about the same cash flow – you're good with trading up as long as you can keep that baseline cash flow. Is that, yeah. did I hear you correctly yeah. on there? Cash flow, cash flow to me is security, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, same reason why a lot of people are working the jobs they're working, right? Is because that gives you a, a bi-monthly payment, you know, yeah. cash flow. And one thing people miss from, from NFL players, there's no cash flow after you're done playing. There's no cash flow. There's a drought every year. I mean, if you don't go to the playoffs from January to September, you don't get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, and guys are always thinking, I'm going to make the next deal. I'm going to resign. I'm going to do this or that. But you need income. You need income to make up for your mistakes. You need income for flexibility and, and stable income is yeah. such an asset for anyone in retirement. And so that was something we had talked about and we put down in the spreadsheet was debt coverage ratio. Yeah. So DCR, which means that for every dollar of debt you have, you have a minimum of $1.25. In your case, it would probably be $1.50. You yeah. would want at least $1.50 of income for for every dollar of debt. Yeah. And so that's, you know, you put like kind of little stopgap measures in there to make sure. So the minimum amount for a down payment was 25%. Mm -hmm. The numbers that we had done for you was a 40% down payment. Yeah. And that's because you wanted to keep it super conservative yeah. and look at what's actually left over for this leverage if I were to have 40% in the down payment and at least a 1.5 debt coverage ratio. Yeah. So those are ways that you can create your own model to build in that security piece. Yeah. So you talked about low debt, security, cash flow, low risk. Yeah. And I love that. I love those four words in a row because it really describes what you and Jamie had said in our conversation was, you know, we want to look at this and make sure we're being smart about it and that we're making good moves that'll give us the best possibility in that retirement piece. Yeah. But at the same time, you wanted to be really careful. Yeah. Don't want, don't want to lose what you have. Yeah, no. And, um, yep. and you also learn in the NFL, more is not always better, you know? Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of people, and I think in not just real estate, right? But we think more is better, right? If I get 80,000 more dollars per year, then I'll be happy. Well, I've seen where that eighty thousand dollars per year takes you on a trip to where you know it ruins your family, or you know you end up just spending eighty thousand dollars. And if you get an increase in eighty thousand dollars, that's really sixty five thousand after taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there's you see in the NFL, yes, money makes a difference, and it can help you in rates and things like that. But more that that mindset of more, more, more is very dangerous long term. So, is that in your book? Uh, you know, you know, uh, no, I, no. My, my next book I think is going to be on financial literacy because knowing the difference between cost and price, yeah. right? You know, you got new iPhone 13 at the cost of that thing is 1200 bucks or the price of that thing is 1200 bucks. The cost, yep. you know, what, what's your, what, what are your debts? What do you, what do you need to pay every month? What do you need to keep the lights on? So say $3,000 for room board and activities. Well, now that phone's $4,300. Do you understand that that's a different number, you know? So, yeah. um, but, but it's tough to tell people more is not, not more is dangerous, you know? No. And we talk a lot about that on the podcast and just with clients is that it takes financial discipline to do this. Yeah. So while other people are going to Disney world, maybe 
they're taking that money and investing in a property. Mm -hmm. And that takes some level of massive, not only financial literacy, but discipline. And that's difficult. It is difficult because they're planning for the long term. Yeah. And that's not always an immediate return. So it's not only just, you know, more is not better, which I personally very much agree with, mm -hmm. but also it's that you know, you need to think about the longer term projection and what actually you're building for the future, because you're not going to feel like how you feel at 36 when you're 56 no. and you're not going to have the same goals and life values and your life stage is so different. And so what, what's that going to look like and how do you prepare? And real estate in many ways is especially residential is very conservative yeah. because everybody needs a place to live. Yeah, Everybody needs a place to live. And so that asset class in particular really creates that stability, gives you some discipline. And if you can make the choice to set your life up for that longer term success and hold back on some of those more immediate gratifications, yeah. that can be really, really powerful stuff for your future. Well, and, and that is in the book, dis discipline oh, okay. and choice, you awesome. know, because, you know, your mindset, whether that's about money or performance, and that's the difference in winning and losing. There are 1,600 players in the NFL this season and 53 will call themselves champions. And it's because they're willing to do what other people are not, right? And some of some of the wealthiest people I know in real estate, one of them, uh, you know, he lived in a house that he was remodeling, and he lived there for three years with a fa with a family of five, and it was not. I mean, there were times they had to, you know, wear hard boots around because there were you know nails poking out of the kitchen. Now he's one of the wealthiest people at doing what he does, and I learned that at an early age in, in football. You're right, a lot of guys. They just want to be, you know, they want to be famous, not great. And fame or game is what I call it. And I, and money's the same way. There are a lot of people who want you to think they're rich. There are a lot of people who care what other people think. And I was one of those people at one point, yeah. you know, but come over to my house and have a pin, an, an opinion about my house. I promise you, I don't care. And I can tell you that champions in sport don't care what other people think because Doubt is something that everybody works with, but everybody deals with someone who doubts them. It's not my job to create your belief in our abilities as a team or our ability or my ability as a performer. You, I'm going to be disciplined and do the things necessary to be great, regardless of, of what where you're at. And when I was on different teams, I was on teams where guys were just happy to make money. You know, you get paid the same whether you win or lose. So if you have a tough loss and and Chris and Chelsea, both of you are the reason why we lost, but each of you get a $250,000 check the next day. How bad is that loss, you know? And yeah. it can really quickly distort what what's important. And for me, winning was always important. And that sometimes meant that I was an outcast because I wouldn't go out on a Thursday and Friday night. We got a game Sunday, man. I'm trying yeah. to win. And real estate, money's the same way. I, I get a what you're saying about mindset. It, it's it's part it sparked this internal debate I've had and questions over the years with people, which is how much of success is mindset versus tactical knowledge, because I think both are important. And I've talked to a lot of people, it's all mindset, all tactical. Obviously, like I get the opportunity to talk with somebody you know, who's had achieved a, tr a tremendous amount of success like you. How do you balance like mindset versus just tactical knowing the plays in the field? Well, it's all mindset, right? 100% okay. mindset, because are you willing to learn something new? Are you willing to say, hey, that was my fault? Are you willing to say, I need to get better? You know, the year we won the Super Bowl, we had OTAs, which is kind of spring practices. And Peyton Manning runs plays so fast, right? 20 seconds, every, especially in practice. He wants to get these plays in. I was having a hard time breathing. Now, here I am in my ninth year in the NFL. I could have just said, hey, bleep it. You know, I'm going to do I'm going to do me and figure it out. But I said, no, you know what? I'm going to reach out to my guy who's an MMA fighting coach. And I'm going to work out with him. And I walked in and said, hey, I need to know how to breathe. Cause I I'm dying here and you don't want to be the guy panting on the court. <gasps> what was the play? You know? Yeah. So, Hey, breathe in for five, swallow your breath, breathe out for eight. And that one lesson that I was willing to go say, I don't have the answers. I was willing to learn something new that helped me be successful. And each of us here could talk about experiences like that, but that mindset of my success depends on what I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. willing to be wrong. Hey, embarrassment, hey, that, you got to pay the cost to be the boss, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you're willing to go through those things, which you're going to survive those things anyways, well, now how many possibilities are out there? Mm -hmm. What can you learn? What can you identify? What can you be tactical about? I and mean, do you have the mindset to do what's necessary to be wealthy? Okay, well, that means you're going to learn some new things. There's a lot of broke people around you, right? <laughs> so to me, mindset's everything because that that's the root of the tree, that grows the different branches of success. Yeah, um, I, I love all of that. And I, and I wanted to say, I really appreciate that we, you kind of 
the messaging that you're sharing is very similar to what we were talking about in our session, which is this combination of creating the plan yeah. with a lot of financial discipline around it, a lot of safeguards, yet taking the mindset, taking the the thought and saying, mm -hmm. I am going to step forward and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this happen yeah. because I really want this and that you have to do everything that it takes. You know, you have to do things like, you know, maybe property manage yourself for a certain period of time for some people, you yeah. know, I do that with some of my own units. Um, I just had a heartbreaking one where the tenant moved out and left her cat. You know, I had to mm. call the dumb friends league and bring the cat down. You know what I mean? Like little things, like just little details and it's hard. And these, some, all of it is just very, much a process, but you have to be willing to do every single one of these things. And and you have to be willing to understand the numbers and yeah. really get down learn. into the numbers learn and start to plan your future. Because without a plan, you're just hoping for the best, you know, and you're yeah. not you're not asking those questions and you're not learning and you're not growing. So I I I appreciate that you're you're sharing that mindset. Yeah. I mean ninety yeah. percent of people have never thought about retirement. Ninety five percent of people do not know how much money they need in retirement. 100% of the people will tell you they're going to retire. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a problem, right? right. Yeah, the math is not Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, people, I get all kinds of questions and things like that. And my, anytime somebody talks about a, a failure, you know, what can I do? Well, what are you doing? You know, I even had a, a parent came up to me at an autograph signing we did. She said, you know, can you tell my son to, to read? Can you make a video to tell him, tell him to read? I'm like, sure, I'm happy to do that. Are you reading to him? She's like, well, no, I mean, he's in school. I'm like, okay, are you reading on your own? Can he see that you're reading? She's like, well, no. I'm like, okay, well, if you want your son to read, how's he supposed to know? Did mm -hmm. you tell him that he can read whatever he wants? You like sports? There's a whole section for sports. You like, you know, cartoons and, and heroes? Great. There's a whole section of that. You have to be willing to do things to, to, to be successful. And, and when you get down to it, and I know this from putting my hand in the dirt and looking in my opponent's eyes. Most people are unwilling to do those things. Mm -hmm. And if you're just willing to choose your mindset and, and create what you want, you're going to be successful than most everybody you know. So I want to loop back around to the leverage question because I'm just, I'm just fascinated to talk about this with you, Ryan. So you've got these properties. Yeah. Have you, I mean, can you share kind of what you're thinking as far as like trading up or how you're going to deploy your equity? Or have you gotten that far yet? Yeah, I mean... Mixed use space is interesting to me. I'm looking at a, a, a property in another place um, that has kind of a residential piece and a really great zoning, right? Which there's something you never learned about in school, right? Zoning. Uh, yeah. No. Um, so it makes it very open and it's a very depressed asset. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in, in larger scale, you know, more bedrooms, you know. Um, I'm happy with what we've done so far in terms of a fourplex and a duplex. And, and every time I drive past a 20 unit apartment building, I'm like, man, somebody's doing really well. Um, so I'd love to get more bedrooms and, and create an increase in cash flow. And, and I'm big on paying down debt too. So if there are months where we're doing well, or there's a rent increase, I mean, we've had rent increases on each of our properties. Um, one of them substantially, and, you know, had I had a mortgage that I'm paying more on principal. And that's one of the reasons why I got into mortgage brokerage, because I, I'm here for people to create a plan. But a lot of people don't know. I didn't know when I got my first house. You can you can pay off your house. Yeah. You know, if right. somebody said that to me. I was like, what do you mean? Pay it off. Like I grew up in a family where you pay down debt, you get more debt. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, we just paid off the car. Mm -hmm. Let's go get a new one. Hey, we just did this. Like, let's go to Disney World. Um, you can pay down, you know, discount points, things like that. So to me. Uh, the only thing I don't like about, you know, going more than four units is now you're in the commercial space and those rates change and, and the balloon payment. I mean, that's something that that's a risk, right? Yep. A balloon payment's a risk. And where, where are you going to be in that five, seven years? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm kind of caught between, do I do something that I feel like is, is a depressed asset and has really great opportunity? Do I do something that I know is going to increase ca cash flow substantially and over the years increase cash flow? But can I pay down? Can I handle that balloon going from a three five to a six seven rate? And those are questions that, you know, doing nothing, I don't have to answer any of those things. But which way do I want to go? And that's something that I'll continue to 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 look at and, and address. Sounds like you're you're more of a leaning towards more like thirty year conventional finance. Well, I like the thirty year because you I know do what? Too. You it's can, locked yeah, in. Yeah, it's locked in. Thirty years, yeah. it's locked in, and that's why I'm huge on that fourplex. I talked to somebody 
recently, you know, and any young person who says, you know, what do you think about buying a house? I'm like, buy a duplex. You got, you got no wife, no kids. Like mm -hmm. go, go get a duplex, go get a four unit and, and live in it. And there, there you go. And people just, the concept to many yeah. people isn't taught. It's not there. Yep. Um, so, and I, and I know somebody who does, has done very well. They looked for, you know, crime scenes that were multifamily units. And then he would go and live in the unit where the crime was committed for 18 months, move out, let somebody come out, come in and bing, bang, boom, he's, he's making income. So there are so many ways to do real estate. I love learning all the different ways. And at the end of the day, you have to do something that you believe in that matches your goals and, and fits what you're willing to work towards. Yep. So talk about, um, I, I've been curious this whole time. How did you go um, NFL athlete, Super Bowl champion to real estate investor? I mean, <laughs> or, you know, what, what was that kind of transition like? How did that, how well, did you decide, make that decision? I say all the time, you don't have to be in real estate to be wealthy, but every wealthy person I know is in real estate. Yep. Right. Um, and when you look at the ability with, with real estate to, to create stability, that was something huge for me. You know, it's different than, you know, I'm, I'm an investor in stocks too. Um, but at the end of the day, there's no, if we buy a hundred thousand dollars in Apple stock, there's no guarantee that no matter what, you'll have 20% of that value. Mm -hmm. And so to me, real estate was a great way to, to just grow the, the portfolio. And also I, I, you know, I have a 401k that has 10 years of NFL matching. I have, you know, stocks that I'd invested in after that first year and, and learned about Warren Buffet, you know, AKA Warren <laughs> Buffett. Um, so I wanted to diversify. And again, the wealthiest people I knew yeah. were, were in real estate. And what I love about real estate, most people in real estate won't brag because there's somebody who has more than you. Right. And, yep. and very true. There are very, very and I've true. yet to meet a, a super flashy real estate person. Yeah. Right. So I, I like the the culture of real estate and but let make no mistake, uh, it was hard for even me as a Super Bowl champion and a multimillionaire to break into real estate. My yep. first meeting to buy our fourplex, the 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 broker spent forty five minutes of our hour meeting, could not wrap his head around the fact that me, a black man, invested money in the stock market and was going to use some of this to purchase real estate. Hmm. even though I played in the NFL. So really? wow. so it was something that there was resistance there. There's, and I'm not in there. That's the elephant in the room when it comes to real estate. It's no different than any other industry where there's pushback to people who, who look like me, who want to get in. And at the same time, it's the number one way to create generational wealth. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be, I wanted to be where I could be. And, and sometimes, and that meant that I had to knock down some doors, be patient and, and forgive others for, for their lack of experience. Yeah. That's a, that's a great story. Um, although I'm sorry to hear that about your experience, but, yeah. um, I'm, no, I'm happy you're in real estate. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and guess what? <laughs> yeah. I, I got a different broker. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, and, and, yeah. and what a short term loss for that guy, you know? Agreed. Agree with you. Um, well, you know, it was it was such a pleasure and an honor to have had a, a portfolio analysis session with you. And again, I mean, having you here really just what that means to me is that you really heard the heard the messaging that we yeah. really want people to do this. I we talk with and a lot of the clients that Chris has through the brokerage are what we call house hackers. Yeah. Which is that concept of you buy it, you live in it, you rent out the other units, you eventually rent that out again and you can do that over and over on a twelve month basis yeah. with a three yeah. percent down, which you probably wouldn't like the three percent down, and I understand yeah, that. Yeah. And not everybody wants to do the three percent down. More security. You yeah, want more yeah. security. But, but and that's it's a great way that's to start. your strategy. I mean, yeah. that is I mean I mean, I'm literally when we when we write the, write up this session, we're going to put that strategy right there <laughs> in the forefront for people to look at more closely. But um, you know, we believe in all this, and I also talk to people regularly about having their kids then get started. So if you didn't yeah. get started at 18 years old, yeah. if you want to set your kid up and however you're raising your children, but if you want them to have financial discipline, you want to give them a leg up you buy their first property for them maybe, and then you have them live in it. They pay the rent, they find roommates to pay the rent, yeah. and you get them started there. And then that retirement piece, of the, they'll be part of that 100% of retired people. Yeah. They can maybe do that at 40, 45. So you know, changing it for the next generation. Absolutely. To really get started earlier and to understand it, and maybe their parents help them out, or maybe they work really hard to start saving right away. Um, I know I just opened up bank accounts for my girls to yeah. get them started and to get them to start to understand how to do this. And you know, happens to be birthday 
birthday's coming up and, you know, anything comes in for the birthday, it goes toward the future. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, I mean, I, I hear you on all this and, and it's great to get this message out because it can change people's lives. It, it can it change does. their future. And, and that's what I love about real estate. No matter who you are, where you come from, there's opportunity provided you're willing to learn about the, the different ways to do it and, and commit to what's best for you. And I'll tell you, uh, our property manager is going to have three willing, you know, three willing kids yeah. between the ages of 14 and 18. Hey, you need a gutter clean? They got it. You need something? They <laughs> got right. it. Like, you ain't got to pay them. I'm feeding them. Go ahead. Right. You know, so <laughs> they'll have some internships uh, with our property management. But I encourage everybody to to learn about real estate because so often we just, so often people are dictated to, hey, here's yeah. the rate you're qualified for. Well, yep. you know, and you don't talk about the plan, what you want to do. But if you learn what's good for you in real estate, you're willing to sacrifice people coming into your house, you know, and being impressed, which I never care what other people think about my money. I promise you, my money doesn't care what you think about it either. <laughs> but to be able to to just empower yourself, real estate gives you, I think, the best opportunity to do that and to, and to create income. So um, you mentioned you're now in brokerage and yeah. I wanted to ask you mortgage brokerage. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to ask you about that. Can you tell us about that? Well, I love it. Um, I love helping people understand the options they had mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you, and the variety of people you get. You know, I had somebody who's got a $2 million property who wants to refinance, you know, uh, $1.1 million of it. All right. I have two people who are first generation homeowners. And one of them said, you know, we also want this to be an income play. How can we make a single family property an income? Mm -hmm. well, have you thought about a duplex? Well, can I afford a duplex? Well, actually, duplexes are on par or sometimes 10 to 20% below the mm -hmm. single family, the home price. So yeah. are you willing to have somebody living next door to you? Um, so, and, and helping people create that home ownership. I'll never forget owning my first home. I still value owning the home that we have. And, and that to me is as big of a part of the American dream as anything else. Can you own, can you own where you sleep? And that's something that's changed lives since the history of our country. Mm. That's very well said. Yeah. So I always like asking this question to people. You've, you've seen extremes in life of, you know, uh, rags to riches, back to <laughs> rags. I mean, you've been through, you know, success and fails yourself. If you could go back and tell your younger self a piece of advice, just anything in general, what would it be? Save more money. Save you more know, money? Save more money. Um, and, and, um, uh, you know, because I think, you know, when people say save money, what does that mean? Well, I saved 60 out of every $100 I made. I would have changed, I would change that to $80 out of every 100. I mean, I was single in Denver living in a two bedroom apartment. I mean, you know, I could have saved money a variety of ways. Um, and also I would tell myself because of where I was giving people money doesn't solve their problems. And I really think we believe that happens, right? Especially with family members. Um, I lost a friend because I've lost many friends on the journey uh, that I've been on. But one of them was upset with me because I wouldn't give him $25,000 to pay for his bankruptcy and his foreclosure and his other debts. And that's not a problem at 22 and 23 I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. So I would tell myself, save more money. Uh, I would invest in real estate earlier and other people's money problems are not your responsibility. That's great advice. Yep. So how can people learn more about you, get a hold of you? I mean, you're a stock investor, real estate investor. You've written a book, Mindset for Mastery. Mm -hmm. You're a speaker, like you, you're in mortgage now, like you do a lot of stuff. How can people learn about you and get in touch with you? Yeah, check me out, RyanHarris68.com. Um, I'm with Finance of America currently, and and we're opening the Denver branch here. Um, so you can you can search nice. Finance of America and, and myself. Are you part of the opening the branch? Yeah. So oh, I'm, in the, cool. I'm in the business development and and mortgage advising role. So my my goal is to and, and the goal of our branch is to create, you know, the the, the brokers that we want, the, you know, real estate's for everyone. Yep. Let's hire everyone to do real estate and working with the city. They've got some great programs, especially after COVID uh, of helping people get hired. And like the three of us here. Once you learn about real estate, it opens doors that you can't close if you want to, as you mentioned, Chris, and to know what you're capable of to get different types of people into a, a team that creates solutions for people owning owning their homes. That's something that I, I, I enjoy doing and I want more people to to win. And whether that's in mortgages, speaking to companies on financial real estate, diversity, equity, inclusion and leadership or being an excellent broadcaster for Notre Dame and, and sports and CBS. I mean, I get an opportunity to, to create impact and I love doing that. I love it. Yeah. 
Ryan, this has been an absolute pleasure. I know you're a busy guy, so we appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming out and joining us, man. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chelsea. Appreciate it both. Thanks, Ryan.